There it is. Well, let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful. Lord, we have I've heard reports of miracles, of things that are just absolutely stunning changes and people being used and things happening and my own even the day experience. Lord, just everything about this is just you are so good. And we we just love doing this. And so Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. I need you to explain this tonight because this is this is so, so deep. We just give you the praise for all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So. Okay. We got, we're up. Are you ready? We're in lesson 10. Does it feel like we've gone that far? Feel long or does it feel short? It's amazing to me. Okay, face-to-face -face basics. I always like to just review just a little bit. Okay, you got to just remember that the Lord is the one that's doing the work. You're just facilitating. And that that sentence is something I remember all the time because it takes all the pressure off me. I'm just, I'm here facilitating you meeting with Jesus. Hallelujah. And the pressure's all on him, not on me. He's got broad shoulders. He gets to carry the world on those shoulders. I just, you know... What am I doing? Uh, uh, this, 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 yeah. Okay, Lord, what do you want to do? Yep, 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 yep. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So that's that's where I am. And I, I just, I love it. Today, I had one of the best compliments I've ever had. I mean, just what it really, because I was laughing about stuff. And this is not always stuff that looks laughable. I mean, it's not, <laughs> but it was so neat what was happening. I'm just, just really into it. And she says, she says, your joy is off the chart. Oh. And I went, thank you, geez, that's the problem. I'm trying to maintain this professional air. It doesn't work, okay? I don't do that very well. And uh, just why? Man, the idea that somebody is sitting there talking to Jesus and they're going to be set free just thrills me. I mean, what better is that, man? I, so, yeah, I get so excited. So the Lord's doing the work. Amen. And Along with him doing the work, he's laughing at me on a regular basis. Okay, he does. I'm made for his entertainment. I am positive on that. <laughs> okay. This big issue is finding the root. Finding the root. You got to find that root. Where is it going to go back to? Okay. Um, is there going to be wounds? There's going to be choices. There are going to be lies that they have received. You need to find those things. Okay. That's where you're going. You got to find the root. Kill the root. Kill the fruit. Just that simple. And the lie is almost always against their identity. That's why they're acting the way they are. They're not acting like they're blood-bought, victorious child of the holy God. I mean, <laughs> this is wrong, this is wrong. See, they're just, it's against their identity. Okay, I just, it's just absolutely fascinating. We also have learned how to deal with hindrances. Hindrances are not bad. Hindrances are absolutely that you, you should be excited when there's a hindrance actually you should be because uh they're not problems they're opportunities to bring all sorts of neat stuff it's going to show you where things are that's deep that's going to be handled and uh, so hindrances are just they're just that they're just a hindrance they're just trying to stop the flow so you just go in and after it go after tra track it down chase it down it's not going to stop you okay we just know that uh we learn how to deal with demons and dissociation. And every now and then I get a call from somebody who says, says uh, explain dissociation to me again. Right? I say, why do you need to know? Well, this lady that I was talking to today, I think she's, I says, well, what did you do if you didn't, if you know that she's dissociated, but you don't know what you're doing with it? What did you do? <laughs> That's a good question. And he says, well, uh, I had Jesus as she show up and he just touched her and he, I just, I said, okay. So and she got really blessed and she cried a lot. And she left. So, okay. So, so now how do I deal with dissociation? Ah, uh, dude. <laughs> I, I love these people, you know? <laughs> oh, well, but you are those people. So it's okay. Spirit, soul, and body. Uh, that comes, comes over so many times. You need to explain what's going on. They just don't know. 
people just do not get it. They don't understand. They are a tree, a three part being. Okay. And so the church has just helped them believe that they're only a two part being. They got a body and they got the other part. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. There's more to it than that. Man, if they don't understand who they are in their spirit, they'll always be trying to work to get better. You're already better. You're best than better. You are absolutely phenomenal. You look exactly like Jesus in your spirit. Hello? Just, okay. What's the hindrance? Their heart. Why? Wounds and choices. Go back to the root. Okay, come on. This is just like, okay. Once you see how it works, it just, it just flows, okay? Hardness of heart is the issue. Always has been. But you need to know that their will is what's crucial. Because if they don't want this, you're not going anywhere. And trying to talk somebody into a healing does not work. If they're not ready, fine. Uh, pull out the checkers board. I don't know. Do something. Because you're not going to go anywhere if they don't want it. Talk them into it. You know, let's go out for coffee or something. Oops. I don't get it. Knowing how things work helps to fix them. And that's what really works. So you see how things are working and you just go there. Okay. How many, uh, show of hands, I got to hear, I got to see this. How many of you use the ball? Hey, fun, hey. Easy, huh? Did this today with something that was so deep, so personal to her, so absolutely overwhelming that it just loomed in front of her. And I said, okay, just stop for a second. Let's make a ball with your hands. Let's put the put, 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 put in there. And she she was crying as she was putting this in there, like, oh, but I like this. And I says, okay, is it all in there? Yeah. Jesus still standing in front of you? Uh-huh. Hand it to him. What? Just hand it to him. What did Jesus do with it? Oh, he's caressing it. He's taking, because it's something very tender to her. He's caressing. He's got it. He says, ah, but look at your hands. She goes, what? Look at your hands. They're empty. Let's leave it in his hands. She goes, oh, well, that was easy. Yep. You're right. It was easy. Uh, wounds and choices affect our lives. That's the way it is. Okay. And we also understood there's more about kidneys. Attributes, senses, you know, perceptions, all that stuff that's working. What's going on inside people? It's very, very important. We also found out, I think, I hope we know that judgments are deadly. <laughs> judgments will kill you. Judgments will kill the people around you. Just can't do judgments, okay? We learned how to go to the courtroom, which is a very important thing. We learned that also along with it are self-judgments. You've got to get rid of, you know, people have got to forgive themselves. It's just amazing. And they also have to learn how to forgive God, get rid of their judgments against God. Who do we think we are to have a judgment against God? It just is absolutely amazing, but it happens all the time. Just all the time. He didn't do what I wanted him to do. Wait a minute. Who be God and who be grunt? Let's get this in the right motion here. Find out. Okay. I love that song. God is God and I am not. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, yeah. About time to figure that out. Okay. We also had a really wonderful time of dealing with blessing and curses. Okay. Are we done dealing with blessings and curses? No. Big subject? <laughs> yeah. Still dealing with curses, are we? Uh-huh. Okay. So, but as long as you see it, blessing and cursing. See it. Ben, you'll you'll be way ahead of the game. Okay. And just recently saw a thing, just tried to explain to the person that it was a conception that they got their identity all screwed up. A conception. You've been dealing with this thing way beyond because you were cursed at conception even at conception messed up so but what happened is it your dad brought a sperm your mom brought an egg and i always do that that finger thing 
Dad brings a sperm, your mom brings an egg, and the best they can do is make an animal. Because only God can make a spirit. And when God brings in that spirit, that spirit is who you are. And when they curse you, you don't get to find out who you are. And you should just see them. They're looking at it like, oh, I want to know who I am. Yeah, that's where we went. <laughs> oh, I'm drunk. That's okay. We learned about physical healing. A little bit about it recently, don't you think? Okay, do we have some wonderful stories to tell? Oh, yeah, yeah, really good stuff. Just remember all the knots in life we get to untie. We get to untie their lives and their pain. We get to untie forgiveness and judgments and get that thing out of their lives. We get to bring repentance. It just slides things out so they're not thinking of themselves so badly. They get to do blessings and curses, and we get to do physical healing. What a what a under wonderful thing we get to do in all these, just because we're being obedient and hanging out there with Jesus. Okay. You have to be the head of some international ministry to do this stuff. Uh, no, nope. What do you have to be? You let God work, let God work and identity. Identity is coming up. Not tonight. Tonight we're going to do something else tonight. We are going to jump in to fear. Oh boy, I'll tell you. Uh, of all the things we do, the thing that I have to encounter the most, the number one deepest, number one issue that I have to encounter all the time is people's fear. Fear, fear is the one. Fear, I minister to fear all the time. It just, it's a, it's a killer, okay? Because fear keeps us from doing what we need to do. It'll just stop you. It'll just stop you. you know, if you're afraid, you're not going to go there. Just won't, okay? You're afraid of people, you'll never be around them. <laughs> if you're afraid of ministry, you just won't do it. I'm sorry, if you're, whatever you're afraid of, eh, it's going to stop you. It's just going to keep you from doing what you need to do. Okay. I had a friend that of all things he wanted to do, he wanted to be a framer and he had done other businesses, different things, but he wanted to be a framer. And so he went out to the job site and we found this guy that would be willing to hire him and stone cold, no nothing guy. And he wants to learn how to do framing. Cool. After the first day, he came knocking on my door in a flat panic. What's your problem? He says, you know what the top plate is? Oh, yeah. Okay. You put a two before down on the on the ground, and then you nail other two befores against it like this. And then you nail another two before across the top, and that's called a wall. It's all laying on the ground. And then they raise that thing up, and then they do another one, and they raise that up, and they attach them at the corner. And then they put another one. In. So you have this little frame, right? It's all two before it's like this. The top plate is that one on top. It's three and a half inches wide. And it's unsupported in the middle. Okay. They had him get up on the top plate and he had to walk out halfway and they were craning a truss down to him and he put it down where it's marked and nail it. And that's a, that supports that wall and the other wall. Simple. Just to walk out there, get the truss, put it down, and nail it, right? You're standing on a corner where your feet are like this, and you're stable. And you have to walk out on a three and a half inch board that's eight foot off the ground. And it goes like this when you're walking. Okay? He's standing in the corner, petrified. He is frozen in fear. This is his first day on the job that he wanted. And he's come to my house and says, how do I deal with this fear? Okay, now, I didn't know then what I know now. But being his pastor, I'm like, okay, well, Lord, how do you want to do this? <laughs> okay, you going to do it again tomorrow? <laughs> yes. Okay, stand on the corner and pray in tongues until you feel you can walk. 
Okay, why did that work? That worked because it got his focus off of him and his insecurities and his inabilities and put them all square on the shoulders of Jesus. He got up there and he prayed in tongues, which I didn't tell him you can do it quietly. <laughs> so he's up on the on a construction site, standing up on the top plate. I should not put on my shirt. I mean, just like he's freaking out. Okay, so he's kind of. But his boss did get born again. I just want to let you know that, that did happen. There's others to that story, but that's okay. We'll just go there. Okay. With fear, we can't serve God the way we should. How does God tell you to go do something that he needs you to do when you're afraid? Did the right crowd come? Okay. Fear ruins the relationships we have. I know of no marriage, none whatsoever, that doesn't have some fear in it. So you guys want to do the marriage course? <laughs> yes. As well we should. Oh, guys, it's so it's so fun. But every relationship, why do you think they're freaking out? Oh, we'll explain that in a few minutes here. It's going to be fun. Fun for me. Okay. Fear hurts our spirituality. It just keeps us from going to the, to the heights of what God has for us. It just does. Fear will stop the healing process. I have been in the middle of a session with somebody heading towards their healing and they get to a point and they say, no, I'm done. I, I'm afraid. And they get, they're done. And it will just stop the healing process. We're right in the middle of getting ready. Just, oh, I mean, I mean, it just stops it. Drives me insane. I just like, no, but fear will stop the healing process because you want to go do something with, and you're meeting with somebody, watch their fear level. You will probably need to deal with their fear before you need to deal with, with their pain they may have too much fear to go into the pain or they have fear that going back to the memory is going to hurt so they won't go back to that memory yeah y'all following me here okay <laughs> you're all just already staring at me it's only 20 minutes into it okay it's okay we're good thinking okay <laughs> yeah it is important okay we don't want to look at fear because it scares us <laughs> There's a sentence for you. I love that sentence. We don't want to look at fear. It scares us. That's because it's fear. Scary because we have fear. Okay. And the second sentence is just like it. It's a fun one too. We're afraid that we have fear. Well, if you're afraid you have fear, then you have fear about having fear. Hmm. This could go all sorts of different ways. How twisted are we? Oh, very. Okay. But fear must be dealt with to continue. That's all there is to it. There was a time I stood in front of my church up in Indian Hills, and I, I, I usually teach from a position of victory. I like to apply things that I'm going to be teaching in my own life before I give it to others. Isn't that wise? That's smart, huh? But this time, I, I went before him. I said, okay, look, I usually come from a position of victory, and I need to teach on something because I don't have victory in this area, and I need to teach on it to get this. Understand, that's, that's how I'm going to really know that I'm getting this. So I need a show of hands. Who here is going to be willing to let me teach this next? We're starting next week. I didn't tell them the subject matter. I just said, teach on this, and we're going to do it together. I'm not going to do this from a place of victory. Everybody going to let me do that? And to a person in the room, they all, yeah, I did. Let's go for it. Yeah. I think they're thinking, we're going to see Lee in his worse than he's going to be all <laughs> they thought this was going to be entertaining i'm sure this is what they were thinking so i got there the next week and i said okay you guys gave me permission to teach this i says i've got parts of it but i don't have other parts of it and i don't know how to really minister to this so i'm going to just teach on it because i need to get this and they said okay well what are you going to teach on? I said, i'm going to teach on fear you should have seen the fear spread throughout the room now what uh i says and one of the guys says, I, I retract my vote. <laughs> That's the kind of people I had. They, they talk back during the set. So it was like this. I said, nope, too late. You're, you're in. I'm doing it anyway. And so I taught for weeks on fear. And the looks on their faces was, well, a lot of this has came out of that time because I learned it. I learned stuff. And I went, oh, this is too good. So I was reading my Bible one day, which I hear is a very good thing to do. That's what I hear. It's the rumor. And I got into Hebrews chapter two, 
And I looked at verse 14 and it says this, since then the children have partaken of flesh and blood in like manner he himself also shared the things, same things. In other words, Jesus became flesh and blood. Okay. That through death he might cause to cease the one having the power of death that is the devil. Now that drove me a little insane. I, I, I read that and I went, the devil has the power of death? The devil has the power of death? What's that mean? I said, can he kill me? No, he can't kill me. Well, wait, then what good does it do for him to have the power of death? I, I, I don't get it. And this ran through my mind for about two weeks. I worried on this. I don't know if you understand that word worried. But without worrying, it means to erode at something. I kept working on this thing and working on this thing in about two weeks. And I like this. And finally, the Lord just out of the, just like I was saying, you don't know when it's going to come. And I'm standing there minding my own business, doing something else. And I heard the Lord so carefully, gently say to me in a whisper, just this whisper, tiny little voice that said, Lee, read the next verse. Okay, <laughs> wait a minute. So we're going to look at the next verse. But before I get there, I want you to know that as I was studying this, I missed something. And what I missed was this word, power. Everybody will tell you that the word power in the New Testament is the word dunamis. Dynamite power, dunamis. We've heard this teaching, dunamis, power, all of them. This is not dunamis. I looked at it and went, well, wait a minute. When I found this, it changed everything for me. Why? Because it's the Greek word kratos not dunamis, and kratos means dominion. Oh, the dominion of death. Now that changes everything. Let me show you how. Because it goes on, it says, and might set these free as many as by fear of death were subject to slavery through all the lifetime to live. Here's the issue. It's our fear of death that hang, hangs us up. It's our fear of death. When I get into the fear of death, what does that do? Well, that puts me under the power of death. Now, wait a minute, not power. It's dominion. She had nothing to do with Satan knowing me or anything that he's going to come after me because I did this. No, no, no. It's like this. His dominion, his realm of, of authority, his realm of influence, his whole thing is the dominion of death. And when I get into fear, I submit to that dominion. Yeah, that's... That just, whew, that just does everything. So when you're sitting there talking to somebody and you see them in fear, what's happening? You have to find out what death they're afraid of and what thing that death is coming before them, what the fear of death is throwing them right under the dominion of the enemy and they will be destroyed. That's true about the people who are still sitting in this room. What are we afraid of? Every time we submit to fear, we submit to the dominion of the enemy. Oh, oh, we've got so much to think about here. So here's the deal. Let's talk about death. Okay. Me and my little, I love these little animated things I find. Okay. Death. What? How funny. Okay. There are so many different kinds of deaths to fear. Now, most people don't walk around with a fear of physical death. They aren't afraid of physical death that much. They don't even think about it. Okay, some do because they're on the verge of dying. Okay, physical death is all that's in their mind. They need healing because they're in they're in fear of dying today. I I have not had a fear of physical death for quite a while, and there are lots of times I probably should have. I worked with my dad, who was an electrician, who loved high power. Amen. So eh, we were forever in grave danger. How many of that did I really understand? Eh, probably not much of <laughs> it. You, yeah, you mind your P's and Q's, and you do what you're supposed to do, and you're fine. Thank you. But guys know that guys do dumb things. <laughs> I mean, come on. Most of us can have that grave marker that says, hey, watch this on that grave marker. Okay. We have come close, so many of us have come close to dying, and we didn't even know it, okay? I heard a testimony of a lady this last week that had put her hand under, cut a branch off that fell in her neighbor's yard, and they're helping, helping their neighbor, and she got her hand under that branch and felt something sting her, and she goes, what in the world? There's a brown recluse spider. She lost half her thumb, okay? Yeah, how close are you? We're always, come on. 
I don't walk around afraid of that. Okay. Because I have a God that's going to protect me in those things. So it's kind of a, kind of a different thing, but many different kinds of death to fear. And so let's look at some of these different kinds of deaths that are not physical death. Okay. First one, the death of respect, the death of looking good, the death of looking what others think of me. Now, this is a thing that hits the male population pretty heavy. I'm not saying it doesn't hit the female population because I'm, I'm here to tell you. Women are afraid of what others may think of them. Why do they have their makeup just right or their hair just right or these shoes or those shoes or this top or that top or this thing or that thing? Okay, they're afraid of what others may think of them. It's, that's, it's a big deal. Guys, though, it's intrinsic. I mean, it's deep on us. We really try. Okay, how many have ever heard this statement coming from a husband? You don't respect me. That, that statement was not a respectful statement. Well, he means it. He means it. You see, that husband and wife can sit there and talk to you, and they say the same sentences and mean different things. So the issue of not being respected is a vastly big deal, okay? Uh, if you ever work around men's ministries, you'd find, oh, God, these guys are susceptible to this every time you turn around, you know? Just tell one of these guys, you're doing those chairs wrong. How dare you? Well, I'm just trying to get the chairs right. Has nothing to do with that. He'll take it as you think I'm bad. You think I'm incompetent. You think I'm not smart enough. You think that. The, and so and they'll take it to every direction you can possibly imagine. And we're only talking about chairs. And I, I know I'm picking on the guys, gals. Not much better. Okay, just as simple. You have to be so careful how you talk to people. Why? Because they have the fear of the death of respect. Okay, second one, the fear of the death of security. Now, this will hit every woman in the room. And I'm not saying that it doesn't hit the men because we have a big problem about is there security. Okay, but if I have a man and a woman sitting across the table from me, I can almost always guarantee that his problem is going to boil down to the fear of the death of respect, and her problem is going to boil down to the fear of the, the fear of the death of control, or, um, um, security. Okay, it's got to be secure. If if a woman doesn't have her security around her, she's shaken. How, how does a man make his wife better deal with all of her insecurities? Make things smooth and easy around her. Why do women freak out when a guy is caught in pornography? Oh, it's all about security. It's all about her. All of a sudden, her security is not there. It's not, she's, she's in danger. Of, of what? And so the guy says, no, I, I prayed about it. It's over. I'm fine. She's not fine. She no, needs to know by time and distance that you're going to be away from that because you've just shattered her ability to trust in you as her security, which is a problem because you're never supposed to be her security. But that's a whole nother issue. Okay, death of security, that's a big one. How about the death of control? The death of control, the people just need to be in control. Now, I think this is a very major misnomer because how much control do you really have? You know, very, very little. And yet when you are out of control, you're not the one. Okay. How do you know this? Who's driving? The one driving feels secure and got the steering wheel. The one not driving going, hey, look out for this. You know that firsthand. <laughs> I do, but not with my wife. Yes, I do. Okay. We had this. This fun thing that happened up near Greeley, they had um, taken this whole area out and everything. And so this one road that used to be a road that went through now just came onto a frozen little lake. Okay, so everybody knew about it. There's nothing back there. Okay, they just took this out and they just made a little pond. It was kind of, kind of cool, except get in your car. And hit the edge of that and go across that lake if you've got the steering wheel in your hand which is no control at all oh, this is fun this is 
this whole fun? The guy in the passenger seat. <laughs> They'll get out, swap places. Oh, this is fun now. <laughs> control. It's all a lie. Are you in control or not in control? Okay. Which brings me to the point that God is not in control. I'm going to make sure everybody hears this because it is a theological issue because everybody thinks God is in control. Therefore, when that little baby dies in that car wreck, God's at fault because he's supposed to be in control. How come he let that baby die? Oh, stop, just stop. The first man, Adam, as soon as he was made, God gave up his control. And he said, you now have free will. And God is no longer controlling him. Interesting. Is God in control of some things? Yes, he controls the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars. Okay, he is because that's nothing. But as far as mankind is concerned, God is not in control. He gave it up to man. So all this stuff that you're worried about. Okay, isn't that amazing? God is not in control. He is in charge. So what do you say? Why did that little baby die? Okay, my first thing to say when somebody says, why did that little baby die? I said, wait, wait a minute. Did you pray for that baby? Was your faith out there to, to block that situation so that God could come in? Did you bring God into the situation? Because that is something we can do. We have that, that power now. We have that ability. Did you bring God in the situation? Well, no. Then don't talk to me about control because God gave it to you and you didn't use it. Anybody? Come on. Are you ready? I'm in the mood for That's a good a, fight tonight. So many songs that you guys love me. Oh, it's like, you know, studying with Amy Grant way back in the day, yes. all the way till now. And it's yes. just like so much of it. And I see it during praise songs at church. I go, nope, can't sing that one. Sorry. <laughs> so the death of control. That's a good one. How about familial death? Death of the family or from the family. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had a woman one day. She crawled. She looked like she was crawling over the table at me. Okay. I had her and her husband and her husband sitting at the head of the table. And she was across the table from me. And she stood up and was leaning. It looked like she was crawling across the table at me. I went, Yo, you know, what's going on? And she says, if you'll just kill his mother, we'll be fine. Are you okay? I think I got the problem here. <laughs> I think I... Lightning quick mind picked up on this little subtle hint. And this happened so often because he had the fear of the death of family or the control of family or the family was going to hurt him. Or the family's going to back up. And he did not understand that his marriage is a primary covenant, a primary relationship. And his in-laws and his parents are secondary. As soon as he got married, they're out of the picture. And he could not see it. So it's kind of a kind of a big thing. But the death of the family is a big deal. Death of what's going on with family. Okay, family. Yeah, life gets interesting. How about this one? Social death. Why don't you see men? Actually, in our church, we do see men down front dancing. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good. Most churches, you'll see the women dancing. And you won't see the men doing much dancing. Why not? Fear of social death. Somebody's going to... Eh. Uh, I'm going to just completely kill myself socially by me doing something, something like that. Okay. So we had to really deal with that in our church up in Indian Hills. And so we, we learned a very big thing when we went to England, we learned something big and I'll tell you about it sometime, but it was so neat, but we came back and made four foot sticks, full four foot flags. We're not talking to AB fake. Wakey, 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 wakey. We're talking to them. You can hear him across the room. And the guy that came back with me was a bodybuilder kind of a guy. And so he was big and strong. And he had one in each hand. And he would start going with those flags during the praise and worship unto God. And it sounded like angel's wings. You could hear this stuff. And it's just. It just changed when the men started worshiping. It was, it was really cool. So much fear of social death. How about this one? Academic death. Now, it hasn't happened here, but it could have happened here. Is both Jim and Joe drive truck. 
okay? If one of them starts saying, well, you can't do that because, and all of a sudden there's an academic problem between them, you can see an academic death. The one that is not doing it right is going to feel all that death happening, academic equality. Um, electricians, being an electrician, recovering. God set me free from that, hallelujah. We don't care what plumbers think. Don't care. Do not care. In fact, is this the other way? When they say some good You're a plumber. Mm. Okay. But when another electrician says something, oh, yeah. I have one. Right. Fear of academic death. See, there's a certain prestige that goes with it, a certain place that certain people have things to say and others don't. So there's an academic death that goes along with it. And people will find out, what do you do for a living? And somebody says, well, I'm a fill in the blank. All of a sudden, they're being held to that level okay well i'm an engineer oh ah. and everybody makes an assumption of what that means and they'll hold that guy to being an engineer you do something wrong and they'll say oh and you call yourself an engineer <laughs> ever heard that line before yeah it all boils down to this kind of relational death relational death there's some kind of relationship that we think is dying and it'll freak us out and we're, we're gone, okay? So that's kind of cool. Now, you have this little picture in there and it's not complete. I'm gonna paint, I, I need you to watch how this goes because if you're gonna take notes at this point, you're gonna miss what it's doing, okay? So you're gonna need to pay attention to what's going on up here, okay? Okay, here's a guy walking down the street, minding his own business. He's just living life. Yeah, da 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 yippee yippee da 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 and, and accusation comes his way. You are a scum sucking pig. You are bad news. You have done something horrible. Okay. What is that accusation? That accusation is actually a flaming arrow of death. And that's what they're doing. They're throwing that fear of death at us. They're throwing something at us as a death that is going that direction. Why does it matter to us when we get accused? You think about it. Should it matter? You see, the accusation is on the accuser, not on the accuser, person being accused. It's on them. They're the ones with the problem, not me. So the accusation comes, if it's a true accusation, you did this wrong. Okay, that's not an accusation, that's the truth. I can do something better. Oh, we do that wrong? Okay, we'll just do it different. That's cool. I don't, I don't receive the accusation. If it's true, then we just change stuff. If it's not true, it's not on me. But see, this idea of an accusation comes along and what are they doing? They're throwing a flaming arrow of death right at you. Huh. So what is the first way that we respond to that flaming arrow of death? We throw up a shield. It's an I take care of me shield. Okay. Interesting, huh? If you throw up a shield between you and that other person, are you able to minister to that other person? No, no. And it's even worse than that because we think it more of like a medieval shield like this and it's not a Star Trek shield. Once I get into this mode where they're accusing me, I throw my shield up against everybody for every reason. You know you do it. All of a sudden you're walking around, you're being accused, you're fighting, you're just you're going to fight because you're trying to maintain. Why? Fear of death. I'm just not going to let it happen. <laughs> So that means I block off God. I block off others who might minister to me. I block off all sorts of people because I've been accused and I'm just throwing up this. Cool. Which brings me to a point that we've already learned. And that is Jeremiah 17, five through six. So says Jehovah. Curse is a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and turns aside his heart from Jehovah. For he shall be like a juniper in the desert. No, it's not in your notes. And you shall see when good comes. And he shall live in parched places in the wilderness and the salt land that is not inhabited. We did this in minute detail back on blessing and cursing. Okay. Why did I bring it up here? Oh, because we're back to our little, little thing here. Okay. What happens? When I throw up that shield, what is the problem here? Is I've just cursed the whole thing by trusting in my flesh. So somebody accuses me and my fear causes me to, boom, and I'm trusting whom? 
I'm trusting me. What does that mean? I cursed the whole thing right there in front of God and everybody. See how it's working? See how this works? Anybody relate? You're not smiling at me anymore. Okay. So the Bible says that in Romans, it says, for the mind of the flesh is death. Finally, I'm going to have yeah. to look it up. The mind of the flesh is death. The mind of the spirit is life and peace, right? The mind of the flesh is death. Well, that's pretty wild because this whole thing is cursed because I'm trusting in the flesh. So flesh, the mind of the flesh is death, which is kind of fascinating because what are they shooting at me? Death. What am I producing? Death. Wait a minute. <laughs> See how this thing goes downhill quick? And it goes into the, there's death going every direction. Most of the time when somebody accuses you, you accuse them back, by the way. You said that right. And so all of a sudden there's all this death going back and forth and you're trusting yourself to take care of it and you're causing death to happen and everything. How many see that this relationship right here and all this happening here is just going to go south quick. It's going to go right into the tubes. Everybody with me? Okay, so here's the problem. Death cannot stop death. It can only add to it. Now you're back to your notes. Okay. Since I have the fear of death, I defend myself. My fear of death causes more death to happen. When someone shoots at me, I automatically make judgments against them. Uh-oh. Lee brought up the word judgments. As soon as they're accusing me, I'm, I'm going to, you did this, and this, but boom. And now all of a sudden, it's a judgment. It was a judgment going the other way, but I don't have to receive a judgment. But for me to give a judgment, now I'm in trouble. Okay. So therefore, the enemy knows how to win by using the power or the dominion of death in my life. <laughs> See, the enemy wins. He got me completely off track of the things of the spirit and walking in the flesh and causing all death. How? By bringing something that sparked my fear of death. As soon as I have the fear of death, I'm in his dominion. Am I making sense? Am I touching anybody's life here? <laughs> <laughs> we all just repeat after me god loves lee yeah. okay you have to become in agreement with him so you have to love lee too okay so it's all good. but the big thing is jesus had a better way oh does he now oh let's get back to our little chart thing little guy walking down the street mind his own business and it comes an accusation boom and he shoots a flaming arrow of death at him what should he do? See, this is the difference. What should he do? Well, that's really rather simple. He just died to self. Die to self, and by faith, let that arrow come right through you to Jesus. Why? Because that's that other passage we looked at, is taking every thought captive, leading it to obedience of Jesus Christ. Oh, look at this. This thing's going to really work. Because... I'm taking that thought captive. I'm taking it to Jesus. It's not about me and what I'm thinking about, and I'm not worrying about protecting me. I got to take this thing back into what Jesus needs to do. And all in favor say aye. That's really good. Okay, because here's the way that works, is that in Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8, it says, blessed is the man who trusts in Jehovah, and Jehovah is his refuge. For he shall, whoops, back up, back up. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, it sends out its roots by the stream and it will not fear when the heat comes, but its foliage will be green. It will be not anxious in a year of drought, nor will it cease from yielding fruit. Why did we bring that up? Well, it's just very simple. Here we are right here. All of a sudden, this thing is all blessed because I'm trusting in Jehovah. See, I'm not trusting in me to defend me. I'm not trusting me to defend that thing. If I something's coming at me, hmm, take it to Jesus. Well, that's very interesting. Why? Because when I do that, the spirit is life and peace. The mind of the spirit is life and peace. I'm bringing life and peace in it. Now, somebody tell me, what's the biggest event that happened after the crucifixion? Yeah, oh, the man is smart. And so here I am. I'm crucified with Christ. I die to myself. I'm bringing things to Jesus and crucifying it with him. And what happens? Resurrection power comes and kills the, the flaming arrow of death. Now I have life power, not death happening. 
what is funny is this all looks really funny and good, but boy, when you're out in the middle of the thick of that thing, you can see it happen. Accusation comes, trust, Lord, what do you have to say? Boom, you can concentrate on that person and not worry about what's happening to you at all because your trust is in him. And you can pray for that person. You can bless that person. You can minister to that person. You can respond to the accusation correctly. Maybe it's true. Maybe you did something stupid. What are you going to do about it? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Repent. Go on. No harm, no foul. See how this works? Everybody with me? Going well? Am I going to have to explain this over about 14 times? Yes, ma'am. I love that too. But in order to be able to do that, you have to know the truth. Absolutely. You have, and it's not it's not knowledge. Mm -hmm. Nope. It's not scripture. Nope. No. It's experiential. It's and it's it's your identity of knowing who you what are. Say about right. Which you go to mm -hmm. all that's who you Which is are. all what the next five slides are about. Okay. So that, that, <laughs> that's great, but Yep, people, people you've got to get there. And that's why we have to go on some other things here. Here we go. Because Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15 says, Since then the children have partaken of flesh and blood. In like manner, he himself also shared the same things. So that through what? He had to die to get this whole thing working. Mm -hmm. That through death, he might cause to cease the one having the dominion of death. That is the devil. See, how did he cause the end of the dominion of death? He took us out of that dominion by his death. And our joining with his death got rid of death. Boom, we're not in the dominion of death. We're not under the dominion of death. I think that's absolutely amazing. And might set these free as many as by fear of death were subject to all the lifetime to live, subject to slavery. I don't have to be subject to slavery. Why? Because he died. No, wait a minute. It's not just that he died. I have to die with him. That's where the rest of these are coming in, and we're going to be talking about this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 says, But we ourselves have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust on ourselves, but on God, the one raising the dead. That answered that whole scenario there. Do you see how that is? We have the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. Why? We had the death happen. We walked through the death. Now, we don't have that sense of death on us anymore, but we can trust not on ourselves, but on God, the one raising the dead. <laughs> Score, baby. Okay. Okay. Trusting ourselves is what drives the fear. One more time. Trusting ourselves is what drives the fear. Whatever fear of death you have, you trust yourself to deal with it, it's going to drive that deeper and stronger and faster and blah, blah, you're going to just be run over. It's going to be a blip on the highway. Abraham was looking forward to seeing it. Now, I got to explain that sentence. Okay. <laughs> Abraham, he fascinates me. What an interesting guy. Okay. Stand there minding his own business. He's old. I mean, he's way up there. And God comes in and says, Abraham, yes, Lord, what you need? He says, I want you to, to cut your son's throat and set him on fire. Okay? What is really fascinating, he didn't even blink. Said, okay. Walk away. Okay. What? I mean, the Bible says, just okay, so the next morning, he got up. He got donkeys, he got wood, he got his son, he got servants, and they headed out. They didn't even know where they were going. He was just trusting God to show him. Okay, we're heading out. I want you to go sacrifice your son. Okay, you show me where. And he headed out. God says, left. Okay. Uh -huh. He's walking. And they're going, and they just keep going. And his son says, yo, dad, you're forgetting something. Where's the sacrifice if we're going to go up? And he says, God will provide. He didn't say God already did provide. You're it, dude. You know? I see. Abraham is about over 100 years now. And, you know, Isaac it doesn't say how old he is at this point. But he's old enough to carry wood by the time he get over there. So he's got to be 
probably 18, 17, 23, somewhere in there, somewhere. He's a full grown personage. And they get to a certain part and, and the, the Lord says, it's just up ahead. He goes, stop. Okay. Tells the servants. And here's the big secret. What did he say? He said, you guys stay here. My son and I are going to go yonder and sacrifice and we will return. Not I will return. We will return. We get clear into the chapter on faith in Hebrews 12 or 11. And it says that Abraham sacrificed Isaac knowing that God said it is through Isaac your seed will be called. He knew that Isaac had to live on further to bring him seed. And so he knew that he was going to be raising up Isaac from the dead. And he was looking forward to this. He's going, come on, son, this is going to be great. From your point of view. <laughs> yeah. You know, so he gets there and says, where's the sacrifice? Dad, dad, just, just got to build the altar. Where's the sacrifice? Dad, and just put the wood on the fire. It's all good. Put, we're getting, getting all ready. Get all ready. Where's the sacrifice? Come here, son. Say what? <laughs> What did you say? Turn around. Huh? Bound his hands. Put him on the fire. Went over and picked up the knife. He's walking towards his son to slit his throat because that's how it works. You have to slit their throat. He's, he's going over to slit his son's throat. And God stopped him. And I can just feel Abraham go, oh, come on. I was going to see him come up out of the fire. This is going to be good. God says, no, that's not the way it works. He says, and there's a ram in the thicket. Do it to that one. Abraham was looking forward to this. See the resurrection happen. See, that's that gets me. That gets me going because, oh, wow. We have, we have the opportunity to experience the resurrection. If you have not experienced your own resurrection, you need to come see me. Because you can do that. Oh, God, this is so good. To get a, an understanding, get a revelation knowledge of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because we should not trust in ourselves, but on God, the one raising the dead. Until you get an understanding of how quickly and how easily he raises the dead, you're going to think that that's a big deal. Well, it's, it's well, I don't know, a, nah, just relax. Raising the dead is as simple to him as curing hiccups, okay? Of course, next time you get the hiccups, you're going to say, you said it was easy. Okay. <laughs> Abraham was looking forward to seeing it. How about this? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, 7 through 18. It says this. Always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in our body. I don't know. Hey, we, we read these things and just breeze over them, okay? Always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in the body, that also the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who live are always being delivered up to death on account of Jesus, that also the life of Jesus may be what? Revealed in our mortal flesh. And it actually uses those words in the Greek, our mortal flesh. We are carrying around, we are carrying around the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in our bodies. This is amazing. Always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in our body, that also the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who live are always being delivered up to death on account of Jesus, but also the life of Jesus may be revealed in our mortal flesh. He isn't talking about we're always being given up to physical death because how many times are you going to physically die to be a testimony? Once. How many times are you going to die to self to be a testimony? Over and over and over and over. Okay. So we've got to manifest the death first and then we can manifest the resurrection life. You got to know who you are. So this whole thing about dying to self is kind of where we are, isn't it? And again, not theological, experiential. Okay. Okay. There was the day that I was minding my own business. Me and my minding my own business always gets me in trouble for some reason. I don't know. I was just sitting there and I saw just out of, just 
out of nowhere, just right there in the theater of my mind, I saw Jesus laying on his back, crown of thorns on his head, blood, bruised, puffy, beard torn out, everything. Just, just, he looked really bad. And he's laying on his ba back and they're stretching his arms up and they're nailing his arms and he's just convulsing in pain. And it's just like, I'm seeing this from over there. Okay, he's laying down and I'm, I'm over about 45 degrees. I'm over there. And he's screaming in pain. And when they got done with the second nail, Jesus stopped and he turned his head and looked over at me. Okay. I went, whoa, zoomed in to his eye, just his eye. And I looked in his eye and in his eye was me. In his eye, in him was me. His eye closed and they, they raised him up and put him on the cross. And I was still in him. And it kind of fast forward a little bit. Don't need all of them. And then he died. He went into Sheol. I was in him. I saw it happen. Saw this happen. Got in him. Wow, God, see all this sin killed, taken off of me. I'm going, whoa, this is amazing. And then just boom, a blinding flash of light and we came up through the rocks into his body up into his body boom and out the door we went in a flash of light boom and as he walked out he looked up and i was over here for some reason again and i looked back at him and looked in his eye and in his eye was me dressed like him that'll rock your world OK, so ever since then, I've been experiencing trying to get people to experience that. OK, so that's a whole thing that we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be talking about a lot of that. Week 12. OK. <laughs> Me and my teasers, I'm waiting for somebody to throw something one of these days. We're doing this day. How about one that you all know? You all have this one memorized. You're supposed to Galatians 2.20. That says, I have been crucified with Christ. Have you? Yes, it is true. Have you experienced it? Do you know it for positive? Have you been crucified with Christ, but you still live? Yet not, no longer I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. For the Son of God, the one loving me and giving himself over on my behalf. Woo, I have been crucified with Christ. This this whole thing about dead to self thing is exactly what we're talking about. If you have been crucified, somebody can accuse you. And you go, okay. So what? Your identity is not based on how they think about you. Your identity is based on who you are in Jesus. Okay, you can handle the accusation because there's no fear of death. You've been through the death. Once you have the death, you don't need the fear of death. His life through our death in his death. I recently quoted this next passage to a lady because she experienced it. And I, and I quoted this and she says, I heard that passage my whole life and it didn't make sense until right now. Romans chapter 6, 10 through 11. It says, for in that he died, he died to sin once for all, but in that he lives, he lives to God. So you also count yourselves be truly dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Earlier in this passage, it says that we are united with Jesus in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. When he came up out of the tomb, I came up out of the tomb with him. How united are you? So our theology has to be practical. It has to be experiential. You have to know, okay? Wow, we do it the same way he did it. Death to selfishness and alive to him. Matthew chapter 16. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. 24 and 25, it says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny his selfishness. 
Now it says, let him deny himself, but I'm saying the same thing. I didn't deny his selfishness. Let him bear his cross. Huh. And then let him follow me. See, the following him comes from denying self and dying. Pick up your cross and then follow him. For whoever may desire to save his soul will lose it. And whoever may lose his soul for my sake will find it. It's not life, it's soul. Okay, very important. The more you try to protect your soul, the more you're going to kill it. The more you let your soul die in him, the more soul you have. Isn't that interesting? So when the accusation comes and they throw that flaming arrow of death at you, what are they shooting at? They're shooting at your soul, how you think, how you want, how you feel. They're shooting at that. If you don't have your soul in line, then you're open game. You're target. <laughs> Die to self and gain who we really are. Die to self and gain who we really are. So let's look back at this little chart here. Okay, so we get another little reminder. Accusations start coming my way. Flaming arrow of death. There it is. What do you do? You die to self. By faith, you receive the arrow to him. Take your thoughts captive, lead it to obedience to Jesus Christ. Bring it all to him. What does he have to say about it? Boom, you're blessed because you're trusting in Jehovah. That gives you life to overcome the death that's coming at you and the resurrection life kills the death. Okay, yes. Come on, isn't that isn't that good? Yeah. And that's all. I'm none of this is in the dominion of death, is it? The dominion of death is coming from outside. So they, I'm, I'm not part of the dominion of death. I have dominated the dominion of death. Isn't that cool? Uh, Lee has preached himself happy. What are the benefits? The benefits are, you can be free from emotional pain. Free from emotional pain. Most people do not know what that looks like. You are free to see them as God sees them. You're not seeing them through the accusation. You're seeing them the way Jesus sees them. That's big. Therefore, you can be free from judgment. You don't judge them. Wow. That's two big freedoms. Free from emotional pain and free from judgment. Both of those are major <laughs> issues. The first one is what we talked about the first few weeks. The other one, free from judgment, is one we talked about when we went to the courtroom. See, whole weeks in this, and all of a sudden, boom, here you are. They're just a sentence now. <laughs> and you can forgive them easily. Now, how many times is the word forgive and the word easily in the same sentence? Okay, that's not normal. Okay, but you can. You can forgive them easily because it has nothing to do with your identity, your fear, whatever. You don't have any fear about it. You are anointed to pray for them because the Bible says, pray for those who accuse you, pray for those who despitefully use you, pray for your enemies, pray for your enemies. Okay, that's pretty cool. And therefore, the enemy now has no hold on you because you're not under his dominion. <laughs> I love this. Enemy has no hold. Uh, he can take his dominion and shove it up his left nostril. Okay. You were wondering how I was going to end that sentence, didn't you? Okay, well, there it was. Okay. That's where we're stopping for break. I think you've got enough to think about during break, right? Yep, yep, yep. I don't know what we're having for break, but water. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Now that you have a, such a firm grip on fear... <laughs> We got some other things to talk about here. This is going to be really good, okay? And that is, right there in your own notes, is weapons against fear. Now, I have used every one of these in my office, in with people, sitting there manifesting fear, and you just know that there's different weapons. You can use different weapons. What's going to mean the thing to them? Let the Lord bring to mind what weapon to use, okay? Um, I was an electrician, like I say, recovering, and I had a whole tool pouch. 
I had all sorts of different tools in the tool pouch. You can't use certain tools in certain places. It's just not the right tool. Okay. And it's just like one day I lost, I don't know where it went, my needle nose pliers. Try doing all the things you normally do when you need a set of needle nose pliers. You don't have the tool. And it's just like, mm. okay. That's exactly what goes on. Folks. You need to really understand and be ready for the Lord to remind you what tools you have in your little pouch. Okay. You got them. Use them right there. There's no way that you do the same tool all the time. Okay. You just use all sorts, whatever, whatever it is. That's really good. First one, death to yourself. And that's the one we have talked about uh, rather intensely the last hour. Okay. Death to yourself. Um, if you're dead, you don't fear death. There's a nice statement for you. <laughs> wow, there's a brain burner. Huh? Okay. But united with him and his death makes it a relationship. Okay. Now, the next one to me is really, really powerful. I'm not going to do the death to yourself because we just did that for a whole bunch of time. But this one, the presence of Jesus. Okay. My brother, physical brother, was... Not much to talk about, okay? <laughs> and he didn't like me. He was four years older than me. He was a, a real pain, okay? He did not like the things of the Lord. I did. He just, I mean, just, he and I were just, we, it was hard to find common ground, okay? So it's kind of interesting. But he was four years older, which means, and he was not a brave person, but he picked on people that are two years younger than him, two grades below him. He picked on them. Why not? It's a little simpler, right? Well, then two grades later, Lee shows up. So the people he picked on, picked on me. Okay, so it's like, go pick on him, you know? Leave me out of this. Well, they one day caught me. They would chase me places. They're just trying to whip on me and stuff. And so this is in Idaho Springs, okay? Where do you run in Idaho Springs? Straight up the mountain. I got good at running straight uphill. Man, I could go up mountains like crazy. That was my big thing. It's just up the mountain. But they caught me downtown. But downtown is two blocks. Okay, whoop de doo But there's an alley. And I was in that alley, and one of them was on one end, and one was on the other. And I, there was no way I'm getting out of this. I mean, I'm, I'm like going, oh, no. They're both bigger than me. So, And I was not known as a fighter. I was a runner. <laughs> Yeah, hallelujah. I knew that running thing. Oh, I didn't know what I was going to do. And these guys got in really, really close when all of a sudden I heard my brother's voice. He said, what are you guys doing? And I, I looked up and here he was. Well, he just happened to come along. Now, that's it. Well, the prestige thing, he didn't want anybody beating up on his little brother. He had nothing to do about love for me. It had to do about his thing about them and all this or stuff. Okay, I understand all that went behind it. But all of a sudden, the big brother showed up. I was safe. Was it two against two? No. I was useless. I was nothing. I'm not anything in this fight. No, I'm a runner. Hallelujah. Okay. So, but... Gene had one thing going for him. He had he buffaloed them into their fear. They had a fear, so we won. They well, backed off and we're gone. I one turn around to thank him. And he just turned his back on me and walked away. He did not care that I was even there. Okay. Bye. Thank you, I guess. Okay. But it picture comes to mind because now I can be in a situation and all these things come. Oh, wait a minute. I have a big brother. I know who he is. And he doesn't have to just accidentally show up. He's already with me. But it absolutely doesn't work if my faith is not there for him. If, I'm not, if I ignore him, I'm on my own. You understand? You with me? Anybody here been beat up? 
Understand? And Jesus was right there. Remember? Makes you just really wonder about yourself, doesn't it? But he's right there, the presence of Jesus. Because how many times did he said, do not fear, I am. Oh, I love that. Do not fear. I've loved the times when Jesus told them not to fear. He showed up in the upper room after the door is locked. And they're all afraid of everything going to happen. And they all think they're going to be arrested and killed. And all of a sudden, just Jesus just shows up in the middle of them. And what does he say at first? Do not fear. Why? Because they were in abject, total, ah, freak out fear. Okay, do not fear, guys. I am. I'm right here. It's okay. Once they understood his presence, the fear left. Why did they fear in the first place? Because they were expecting bad and good showed up and they didn't recognize the good as good. That's a message for somebody here in the room. Okay, I'll just let that ride. Okay. When he shows up, he deals with the lies we believe. When he shows up, why? Because I am the way, the, and the life. Okay. When the truth shows up, the lie disappears. So that's one of the big things is that every time somebody is in fear, they're in fear because of a lie. Just mark it down. They're there. The fear is there because of a lie. So when the truth shows up, the lie disappears. It's just kind of a fascinating deal. When the light shows up, the dark runs away. How fast at the speed of light. There's no such thing as the speed of dark. That's, that's preachable right there. That's okay. And I've done that. Okay. So the presence of Jesus is a major weapon. He's right there with you. What is there to fear? Okay. Um, right now I've been doing a major study. Oh, I can't do that yet. In a few minutes, I'll tell you about that. Okay. Here we go. Next weapon. No, it's this week, but it's next slide. Okay, so here we go. Next weapon is faith. I think this is a fascinating thing because I told you about this already, that I was sitting there one day and I asked the Lord, do demons feel pain? And he said, yes, they do. Ooh, cool. How, what are they, how does that work? And he says, they, faith hurts them. Faith hurts them. I'll remember that forever. Faith hurts hurts them. Ew, can I can I hurt one someday? He says, sure. So demon showed up and I said, hey, demon, do you feel my faith? And he screamed. Oh, I like that. Okay, that was really fun. And then the Lord said, don't get cocky. So I've been having a problem <laughs> with that cocky thing ever since because it was really cool. Okay. Uh, calm. It's all good. Okay. Here's a big thing for you to know. Faith, believe, and trust are all the same word in the Greek. Faith, believe, and trust are all the same thing. So if you can't can't define faith, fine. Why don't you just call it trust? Do you trust him? You say, do I have faith in Jesus? That's kind of, do you have faith in Jesus? Okay, so it's kind of a preacherism. But can you trust him? See, that takes that takes all that legalism, the, the theology stuff out of it. Can you trust him? Okay, yeah. Okay. Faith, believe, and trust. Fear is your faith turned to negative. If you have a problem with fear, it's because your faith has been turned to the negative. Right now, it's it's just almost a gimme to just do the dark side of the force. Okay, it's just like this is the whole Jedi thing. Okay, but fear is the dark side. It's it's what takes your faith and applies it in the wrong place. It takes it to the negative. Faith is there for you to believe in something to make it work. And to, it's the spiritual uh, energy field of causation. It causes things to happen. Well, you turn that to the negative and you turn your faith to cause things to happen to the negative. That's called fear and it causes things to happen. So your fear actually causes the things that you're afraid of to happen. It's your faith that did it. Have fun with that one. That was fun. That was fun. Was that fun? That was fun. Everybody says, you're sick. You're thinking about fun. All right. Another weapon against fear is love. 
And this is the number one. This is the big one. Uh, if there's fear, I bring this one out if, if I can, if that's the thing that the Lord is doing. But this one is the one that comes to mind the most. Okay, why? Yep, and we'll get that in a second. Fear comes from not knowing his love. If you don't know he loves you, you'll be afraid. If you don't know he loves you, you will be afraid. Because 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, perfect love casts out fear. And that verse is right there. It says, 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. Okay, one more time for those of you on drugs who just had a long day. Maybe you're sleeping. Hello, let me say it one more time. There is no fear in love. What's the best weapon to wipe out fear? Love, because there is no fear in love. Okay, that's just, just a few words right there. Okay, he says, but perfect love casts out fear. Now that shows that love has a power and is active towards a certain direction. Love casts out fear. Why? Because fear has punishment. Okay, here we go. The one fearing has not been perfected in love. Fear has punishment or judgment or whatever your translations would say, okay? Because they say all sorts of weird things. But here's the deal. Somebody's in fear. And I say, okay, walk up to Jesus, okay? Ask Jesus, do you love me? Jesus, do you love me? If they hear Jesus say yes, this is too funny. This is too simple. This is too fun. But just say, oh yeah, where's your fear? And they look at you like, what? And then they look around and they don't have it. What happened? Perfect love casts out fear. Fear is not there. Why? Because Jesus loves me. So when I see somebody that's in abject fear all the time, what's the issue? They don't know the love of Jesus. <laughs> Does Jesus love you? Oh boy, more than you know, way more than any of us understand, his love is right there. Okay, why does the presence of Jesus work? Because Jesus is love. Perfect love casts out fear. I do this all the time. You got to know if you want to get rid of fear, where do you go? The love of Jesus. Every time. What happens if they can't see Jesus? That's a whole nother trigger. That's a whole nother thing that you have to deal with. That's something that you're having to work on. That's their, their hindrance. Is it black or is it blank? When it comes to the love of Jesus, knowing the presence of Jesus, it's never just blank. It's always black. There's always a hindrance. Something is stopping them from. It isn't Jesus needs to go to them to another place because they have to go here. This is very important. They have to go there. Am I making sense? Everybody flowing with me? Okay. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with judgment. And so when, okay, here we go. Now that's where we dive into the, the damage. Here we go. Lee gets in trouble here. Here we go. Ready? Religion. The number one cause of fear is religion. Why? Because religion says you're bad. You can't be good enough. You aren't doing enough. You're just, a, oh, you look what you did. Look what you did back there. That would not mean you, God's not coming. Ever hear that? How much fear is there because of bad theology? That you did something bad, so Jesus can't show up to help you. Oh, man, that is that's so bogus. It's ridiculous how bad that is. Jesus shows up because there's sin. Because he's the only one that can do something about it. Your sin is not big enough to keep him away. Because your sin is not bigger than him. Religion, all these things we've been through all our lives, as they hammer on us, that you've got to do this or do that or do this or do that. And you, or you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You're not, good enough. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not worthy. Enough. Shut up. Drives me crazy. Because I am worthy. I've been made worthy by the blood of Jesus Christ. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am enough. I am enough. He made me to be enough. Mm 
He created me. He made me and wants me in his presence. You can't tell me I'm not good enough to be there. That's called preaching. Got me all cranked up, didn't you? This one gets me. Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has to do with judgment. Oh, and the one fearing has not been, what's that next word it says in there? Perfected? Hmm. Never goes, well, I'll never be perfect. Not the word, okay? Better matured. Greek word teleos means go to the end result. Okay, so the one who, as judgment, has not found themselves being raised into maturity through love. See, that's ah, the one fearing has not been perfected in love. If I've been perfected, if I've been matured in love, if I've been grown up in love, then I know he loves me. And guess where the fear goes? Right down the toilet, man, is out of here. Don't need it. Have I made a good enough point against fear tonight? Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, mm -hmm. We made that point. We're not done. Okay. There's another weapon. Peace. The scripture that says, let peace rule in your heart. What? <clears throat> let peace reign. That word, rule or reign, means to be an umpire. Let him tell you what's out and what's safe. <laughs> Safe up, you're out. Okay, let peace rule. Let it rain. I'd be walking down the street, minding my own business, talking to somebody. La da da da, -da in Moscow, Russia. You got to understand, an American in Moscow, Russia, is not a safe place. Okay, never was. You know, but when we were leaving to go to Russia, they delivered the last Rocky Mountain news to my house that we had for our subscription. The last one, we are leaving that day or the next day. They delivered the last newspaper and I opened up the newspaper and there on the front cover was a picture on almost the whole page and there was a flood back east and somebody took a picture of this person's house who's completely surrounded by flood and on his roof, it said, no fear. And here we were going, we're going to go to Russia. Are we going? Are we okay? Are we okay? Like, and open it up, and and the Lord just spoke, spoke through a liberal Democrat newspaper and said, "No fear," and I went, Duh. "Honey, you gotta see this." And so she walked in the room and says, "Look at this!" Boom! She goes, "Oh, I need it." God will use a donkey if we need it. Okay, so it's all good. Let peace rule in your heart. Do you have peace? See, when you have peace, there's no fear. We started getting afraid. And what happened? The peace came against the fear. Let peace rule in your heart. Walking down the street in Moscow. Okay. Yeah, da, da, talking. And you're just walking along. And all of a sudden, just like that, you take one more step and your peace disappears. You back up a step and your peace rule. Is back. Gone. Back. Gone. Can you play with the? I did. Yes. That was fun. Whoa. Look at that. That's neat. Okay. We're not going down that street. I told the guy this. And he was going, why? No. Feel this. I had a, it was a learning experience for the guy that I was discipling. Okay. Wait, do you feel that? Okay. So he's saying, so, so let's go this way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's good we're not going that way okay and i says okay this way yeah 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 down the road we went let peace be the empire how many times driving down the street you go it doesn't feel good let's you know Right? Is everybody with me? I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give it over to God and have peace. Give it over to God. Fear? Okay. Put your fear in a ball. Huh. Uh, that sounds interesting. Maybe somebody should teach on that, doing the thing with the ball. Okay. But yeah, put your fear in a ball. Hand it to Jesus. What happens to your fear? 
Well, it's with him. What do I have to do about it? Nothing. It's a goner. Okay. This one is a little harder to explain. It's really hard to explain without religion because religion shows up when I bring up this one. It shows up every time. The fear of the Lord. In all my notes, it just says FOTL, FOTL, because fear of the Lord is too hard to write out. So it just becomes FOTL, okay? So <laughs> fear of the Lord. Here's the issue. People say, well, we're not supposed to fear. Why do we fear the Lord? Okay, no, let's think about this. We don't fear what we should fear. We don't fear what we should fear, mm -hmm. okay? I want to fear alienating his relationship. I'm afraid of doing something that's alienating his relationship with me. He'll never leave me, never forsake me, but I can do things that make life miserable for a while. I can walk out of his will. I can walk into all sorts of stupidity. I can do sin. Hmm. Anybody there? I fear alienating his relationship. Okay. So one day I was asking my dad, and like I told my I told you, my dad liked high, high voltage. 4160. We did mine stuff where they brought in the high voltage and he had to transform it down and then transform it down again so they could send it down the mine shaft with higher high, velo high voltage so that it would make the distance, get down there into a substation, then transform it down again so they could use it. Okay? That's a lot of transformers. And that's all sorts of neat stuff they pay him to put in. Yay! Okay? That's how he made his money. He loved doing that. One day they had a little pit that had a couple transformers in it, and my brother um, had a, a pole that they used to turn on the fuses. Okay, because it's too far. I mean, you don't want to do that with your hand. You want to do that with with a stick that's insulated, right? And Dad says, "Okay, Gene, turn it on." So Gene rushed over the pole and poked the fuse in, and Dad was standing up to his waist in electrical fire, just like that. He came up out of that pit. And my brother for years kept saying, I never thought the old man could move that fast. <laughs> man, look at that old man go. <laughs> he was out of there. And you had you know, just something was wrong. Okay. The windings are wrong. This is that. So he just boom. So one day I was asking him, so hey dad, you're an electrician. Does electricity scare you? Yes. And he answered so fast he shook me. I said, whoa. What do you mean? He says, yes. Oh, yes. He says, the second you don't respect it, it'll kill you. I went, whoa. I says, then why do you do this? He says, oh, what you can do with it is phenomenal. And the Lord said, there it is. Fear of the Lord. You see, we have this God, awesome God of the universe that is massively powerful and we have the audacity to tell him no. I, I just think about that. Come on. You know, so God says, do something. No, I don't want to do that. See, we don't fear what we should fear. The incredible, awesome power of God. And he's with us. And he tones everything down just to deal with us because we're idiots. And I know, I know where all the hair went. I know it's just where God just went, what's wrong with you, boy? What's wrong? Sure, that's out of love. Totally out of love. Just wiped it all off. Okay. Guys, this is amazing to me to know the fear of the Lord is an idea behind knowing his power and his usability. Can that power be used in this life? Yes. Just like all that electricity can be brought to a point of plugging your charger into it, okay? All that power is just sitting right off on that pole right there. All the stuff that comes, it's just all right here. Just powerful. It's, what is it? It's brought down to usability for you. The power of God has been brought down to the usability of you, okay? I don't want to alienate his, his friendship, okay? Our situation is much smaller than the Lord, okay? We don't know the depth of his power toward us. We just don't, okay? But what do we have to do? And this is the big deal, is we've got to be in submission. Submit to him, okay? Submit to him. One day, 
I was playing with, <laughs> I play with theology. Okay. I don't know if the rest of you know, how, I mean, you know me enough. I play with these things. I, it's just okay. It's, it's kind of fun just to look at what God is doing and different things. And I was playing with creation. But he's a creator. Okay. He creates God, just to kick back and try to expand your mind enough to see how God, out of nothing, created this universe. Just created it. Okay? All scientists are still trying to figure out how all this stuff works. And it just, it tickles me because they're trying to say, well, at the speed of light, it would not make it here for three billion years. Oh, person i love you so much you little head poor little boy who says that the speed of light had to be a constant at that point when he made man to be an adult he created everything with the appearance of age so you expand that to all these planets and galaxies and everything and go poof. And he made them all with the appearance of age. Their light is already shining to us. He created it that way. And we're, we're going, oh, we're so far in the feet of light. It's a person, you just shut up. You're not, you're not helping your cause. Okay. Great. Awesome power. Absolutely amazing. Okay. I don't know if you remember the line out of Aladdin with uh, Robin Williams, and he says, because he got him out of this lamp, the genie out of this lamp, and he says, what's this? And he says, great, awesome power, cosmic, awesome power, any big living space. Well, that's this, great, awesome, little bitty, itty bitty living space. He's living within me. Awesome, cosmic power, itty bitty living space. I, I, I worry about me. Because I just, you know, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Give her that one. It, it, it was truly spoken in love. I know that's true. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And why do we fear Satan? Oh, my God. He didn't create anything. Oh, way too much credit. And people are like, oh, Satan. Oh, it's Satan. Any baby Satan. Squeaky, 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 squeaky. Satan. Guys, we got to know where the great power is, the fear of the Lord. And if you ever studied the fear of the Lord out of scripture, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The more I fear him, the more wise I get. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. The more I fear him, the more I understand things. Oh, come on. The fear of the Lord is absolutely excellent. And it's not something for us to be afraid of. It's for us to use and understand the fear of the Lord is this magnificent thing of his awesome power is bigger than us. Get your religion out of it. Because they, when I was growing up, they taught us the fear of the Lord. You vile, wretched sinner. And God, the fear of God will strike you down. Oh, shut up, up, up. I was so sick of all that. When I found out the day, the day the power of God hit me in ways that I will never be able to expand, uh, to explain. I just, I mean, just, just power, awesome power. And in the middle of all that awesome power, I only knew one thing. He loved me. Killed all the religion. All my perfect theological ducks that I had in the perfect row were all dead at my feet. Dead ducks. I'm going to write a book uh, on someday called Dead Ducks. That's the way it is. Okay. Everything is about his presence and his power. Okay. Everything. So one day in the middle of um, intercession, we were all praying. And uh, the Lord said this. And I'm going to give you the short version of it. And I have the long version sitting in my office. Okay. But um any fear that is not the fear of Jehovah is false worship, giving false credence to a false God. <laughs> He'll stay up there for a little while. It's 
It's on the bottom, page 97. Okay. But this is true. Any fear that is not the fear of the Lord is false worship, giving false credence to a false God. That label fear for you? That was fun. Okay. Think we're done? Everybody says we're done, right? Nope. Not even close. Okay. A little bit more. It is warm in here. Is it warm in here to everybody? I've just been working hard, huh? That's what it's. Can't you see the glow? That's my glory's kind of shining through. That's what that's. Yeah, it's trust me, buddy. It's always <laughs> we'll talk to you about that tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> ministering to fear. Okay, let's look at some little tidbits here about things about ministering to fear. You got to recognize how it's manifesting. Okay, maybe it's something just stopping the process. What's happening? Watch faces. Get used to watching the people. People, quit closing your eyes when you pray. Just stop it. It's religion. Open your eyes and see what God is doing. He's standing right in front of you. What do you have to close your eyes to pray for? Okay, I have my eyes open most of the time when I'm praying. Because I want to see what God's doing when I'm praying. Okay, I watch people. Be a person that gets used to watching people. Watch their face. It's you get some of the neatest hints of what God is doing with some of the smallest clues. Okay. Uh, just recently I had a gal. She's in there. Just everything just stole. She looks like she's made out of stone. She just. And then this lip. Only this half of the upper part of her lip. Started going. Just almost couldn't see it across, across the table at her. She's like this. Okay. Jesus just showed up. Mm -hmm. I guess, and pretty soon it's started going, the tears and this fire, this water work started and, and everything. And she used up my Kleenexes out of my box. And <laughs> and it was, I mean, it's like this. I, so her husband was there and I said, grab that out of the box right there. I said, grab that. And I said, put out the trash can. She's filling a thing. It's good. Watch what they're doing because nothing is happening. And then there's something. When you say something to somebody and they look at you and all of a sudden they go, they're doubting what you're saying. Ah, we found it. We found the spot that we're going to be heading towards because that's the place that Jesus is working. Right there. You just doubted that. That was good. Oh, you're, yeah, I know you're smiling. Yeah, I'm laughing at you. It's all good. Okay. Watch faces. They will tell you what's going on. And that will tell you where fear is. It'll show up in their face. It'll show up. Okay. Um. Maybe a black visual hindrance, right? Is it black or is it blank? Remember that, okay? But if they go into a black, it could just be straight fear that's keeping them from going there. They're afraid of what's going to happen next. And boy, all of a sudden, there is no visual. It's not blank. It's black. You're fighting fear. There's going to be a fear involved in that, okay? Okay? Maybe... And of course, I do the same thing I do with all the hindrances. The Lord, you show them where the hindrance is coming from. Okay, they'll know. I don't know what God's going to show them. I don't know what he's going to show them. But he's going to show them something, and they're going to go, yeah. something. Okay. And of course, how's that feel? When you say the question, how's that feel, when there's something happening, how's that feel? You can feel their fear rise. How's that feel? Uh, and they're just... I don't want to go there. I just, right. Why? Why? Okay. Uh, again, recently, lady had, she says, oh, I've been set free from that. I've had ministry on that because I just had the Lord just take it to a memory. Come on. I didn't point out anything. I just said, Lord, take it to a memory. And she just, uh, I had the, I've had people minister to that. I've been through this. I've had this Christian therapist, this thing like the back. She had all these things to minister to that one thing. She says, I'm good back there. Really? The Lord just called her a liar because he took her to that memory. Okay. Why? There's shame back there. There's all this stuff happening back there. Yeah. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff happening back there. No, I know what's going on here. Just, you just quit sharing the screen.
Okay, are we back to there? Good to go. Is it working on it? What's going on? Oh, it's that. It's that thing. Okay. Uh, hang on, folks. Just a little glitch in the matrix. Okay, here, there. Yes, he is. And now you're seeing all sorts of things there, I'm sure. Well, why is it doing that? Okay, I know why it's doing that. Share. Okay. And we're back to here. And we go to there. We got it? Yeah. Okay. We're there? Or are we? Okay. Lord, we used to show them where the hindrance is. Okay. And we're, we're to, how does that feel? I wasn't afraid. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. My question is, okay, we're still, we're still recording. So are we still recording? Yes, we are. I hope. Yes, we're still recording because it says you can pause it. Okay. How's that feel? Watch for fear. Watch as they start getting afraid of things. Okay. How's it fear? If it's black, if they're stopping it, there's something going there. You have to deal with it. Okay. Here's the thing. Kind of discern what's afraid to die. Okay. It helps to know what kind of fear of death they're having. Whether it, Okay. I was talking about this lady. What was it? Shame. Shame was the thing that she just didn't want to go through the shame again. Well, wait a minute. We're just, you're among friends. There's no problem here. There's no shame. We're not feeling any shame. You are. So we just need to let the Lord take you there. And he did. He took back and she says, I've been here all these times. I said, well, what did, what, and this is a real question. So what did you learn during your therapy sessions? She went, well, I am, um, I, uh, I didn't learn anything from my therapy sessions. <laughs> okay, then why don't we just go here then? Okay. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not trying to be mean about it. I just say, what did you learn? Here we go. So we're back to it. Discerning what's afraid to die. She had the fear of death of control over her shame. She was controlling her pain. She was controlling her things. The fear of the death of control. What happens when she doesn't have the control anymore? Now, there might be a dissociated part. Now, this is true because the dissociated part is protecting an area of pain. Boy, though, that part will make her feel, make him feel, make them feel the fear of going there. Can't go there. Just can't go there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many times I've heard this line. This is a line I've heard. If I go there, I'll die. Okay. Satanic ritual abuse, Masonic ritual abuse, all these ritual abuse things, they are very sneaky. And they'll tell a little kid, if you tell anybody, you'll die. And then they'll rape them continually. But if you tell anybody, you'll die. Okay. Had a lady that was involved as she was a four-year-old and she was the one who had to kill a baby. They made her kill a baby. Okay. And she, they told her, if you tell anybody, They'll come kill you. If they don't, we will. Okay, that's heavy. That's heavy stuff. How much fear do you think she had? How much did we have to fight to get down to that room? Okay, we, we, took, we took sessions to get to that place. And finally, okay, we had to get rid of a whole chorus line of dissociated parts. I mean, she had so many lined up. I mean, they were... Heck, this thing, this, this is really something. We got through that. When we got down there to that, eventually, okay, the Lord showed her 
wouldn't let her go into that room. He showed her that room like a concrete box that she was standing outside of, that all that was going on into. And Jesus said, you can't go in there anymore. You need to have that box taken away. And he took away the room and she had no memory. I mean, she knew that something happened, but she didn't have that memory anymore. She didn't hear what they had said. She didn't hear any of that. The whole idea of what she had to do was gone. It was just taken away. Come on, that's a praise God. Right? Yeah. But she, she was the one who said, if I go there, I'll die. I'll die. No, you won't die. How, how come you can say that? Huh? Um, because I'm representing God Almighty, the universe. You want him to say it? Okay, Lord, would you tell her? Why don't you ask him, Lord, will I die if I go there? Lord, will I die if I go? No. I, how else to sink? He didn't, she didn't get a sentence. She didn't get a paragraph. She didn't get a lot of flowery. No angels. Nothing happened. And just the Lord saying, no. Okay. What did she need? To hear the Lord say, no. Okay. I won't die. His no had more volume than, geez, if I go there, I'll die. And of course, what do I usually say about that? Is Lord Jesus, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> okay. Bring him to Jesus. Let Jesus be the one explaining that to him. Okay. Um, because uh, they always must give permission to go there. If they don't give permission, then they're afraid to go there and they won't go. So they have to have the permission to go there, even though they're going, oh, I'm kind of afraid of going there, but uh, Lord, I give you permission to go there. We're going. Okay. So we ask them for the permission. He asked them to give it to Jesus. And then the presence of Jesus destroys fear. There's something about Jesus just showing up in the room. And they're sitting there and they have all this damage and all these things that are happening. And they're sitting in there just abject fear. I said, Lord Jesus, would you come into that room, please? And all of a sudden they go, oh, Jesus. He walks in. Just his presence. He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. Just his presence. And you can see it on their face. They go, oh, Jesus is there. <laughs> it's, it's, oh. That thrills my heart every time that happens. The presence of Jesus destroys fear. And so I thought I'd give you this little graphic so you can see how it works. Okay. Just you bring Jesus into it. What happens? Okay. Took care of that. Just chase death out of the room. <laughs> Come on. That was cool. United with Jesus. And we are in him. Wow. That just makes it so much better. Keep with it until there's peace. And then I love asking this question. I love this question. This is one of my favorite questions all the time. So where's the fear? And they go, I mean, they actually stop and look around. Where are they looking? I don't know. Where do you keep it? Your back pocket? Where they just, but where's the fear? And they go, it's gone. Before, they didn't have to look for it because it was totally always present. And all of a sudden, they're looking around. What's well, gone? I love that. Every time we get somebody set free from an addiction, we always say, oh, where, where are the cigarettes? <laughs> They're gone. Oh, cool. Where's the alcohol? It's gone. Where's the fornication? <sighs> I love it. I love it. That's why we do this stuff. Where's the fear? It's gone. And then, of course, she has that question. How's that feel? which is one of the most ridiculous questions about this time. You see it on their face. They're all, oh, oh they're just all like this. How's that feel? Oh, no, they can't tell you. She asked the question anyway, because it makes them focus. It feels so good. It's like, never had that feeling before. They can't describe it. So what do you do? Well, you celebrate with them. This last bit is something that I, I learned this. I'm just going to share it with you guys because it's, it's really fun, okay? And I call it the entity of fear, okay? The entity of fear. Let's just go through it and see how I have on the notes here. Some people have a life-controlling fear. I mean, it's just, it's pervasive. It's all around them, okay? It's, it's an unreasonable fear. They don't know where it came from. It's just fear. And they can't, they're having a hard time putting their finger on it, but it's fear. They can tell you it's fear, but they don't know why or how. It's just kind of crazy. It defines a major part of their life. Boom, it's there. I had somebody say this one day to me. It's always present, 
eating at the back of my mind. I thought that was too graphic. That was too good, too. I had to put that in there. He's just nah, eating at the back of my mind, okay? So I ha I do this with them. I said, okay, I want you to see yourself in the spirit. By this time, I probably have already had them doing that, okay? Walk up to Jesus, ask him things, whatever. I said, so see yourself in the spirit, okay? Turn around quickly, and what do you see? Now, I've done this. Now, I have a little bit more things that I do with it. Like, I have them walk up to Jesus. And I, I love doing this with females mostly. I've done this with guys and they get it, but it isn't as strong as women. And so the women in the room will get this. And so walk up to Jesus, okay? Jesus is right there, right? Now, I want you to turn around and back up into him and let his arms run. Yeah, see, see the faces of the women are going, oh yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. <laughs> the guy is can say, okay, there's Jesus. No, got Jesus' presence, yeah. Now just turn around. They know who Jesus is. They know he's right there, okay? But the women love that snuggle thing, okay? That's really good. And so I had to have them turn around. Now you're looking out. What do you see? I've done this so many times. I said, okay, just you stand there. Okay, okay. Quickly, turn around. What do you see? Like, ah. Oh, that's really cool. Because what happens is they see the entity of their fear. The fear is a thing or a being or something. Is it a demon? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I have no care or concern about labeling it, okay? But they see it as a thing, as a person. And it usually has eyes looking at them. And the eyes are somehow they're glowing or they're red or they're something. And they look around and they see this thing. Now, the reaction is entertaining. I have to really be careful here because when I have them turn around, it thrills me. And I, I I have this little renegade giggle that comes out every now and then. So I have to be really careful with that. Turn around. What do you see? Boom. Yeah. There it is. You see it. Now you see that it's not you. You see there's something out there. But you're safe because you got the presence of Jesus with you. And you're, there, and you're looking at this fear dead in his face. And you're fine. Come on. Is that cool? Yeah. It's so totally cool. Okay. Is a demon or a spirit? Who cares? Okay. Lord, where did I let this thing rule? Where did I give it authority? Where did I let this thing come in? Because they're looking at it going, it's not me. It's right there. Where did I let this thing in? How did I, where did this come from? Boy, that's a very good question. Okay. And See the memory, acknowledge the reception. Or, Lord, what do you have to say about it? So where it is, what's going on? Yeah, whatever is happening, it's about this thing. Why did it get its authority? Okay. And that's, that's when they start talking to Jesus. Lord, I gave this thing authority. I gave it authority. You see what's happening? They're submitting to Jesus about this thing. They let this thing in and said, Lord, I gave this thing authority. Will you please forgive me? Okay. And what's the Lord say? Well, of course, if we confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You do the forgiveness and the cleansing right there. Okay. Um, I have the next thing is, is come back to the present, but I don't. Uh, that's right there. You're right there. You're here. That's time to talk to it, okay? Um, fear, I let you have this authority. So we talk to it. Fear, I gave you authority, but I break my covenant with you. I break my covenant. I take away your authority. I break my covenant with you. My covenant with Jesus is stronger. Jesus has forgiven me. You no longer have the ability to affect me. Leave me now and never return. Now, that's a quick, do you need that script? Well, kind of. You need to understand what is being said there. I gave you authority. My authority is broken. You, your authority is broken. My covenant with you that I gave you, I let you into my life. My, my covenant with Jesus is stronger. Jesus has forgiven me. Boom. And sometimes you have to make sure that they understand. And I have forgiven me because they let that in. So they have judgment against themselves, possibly. 
Jesus has forgiven me. I have forgiven me. So fear in the name of Jesus. Fear, I command you to leave me alone. You have no place in my life. And boy, you get people start talking like this. What happens to their faith level? Oh, faith is the opposite of. Oh, what happens when they feel the faith happening? Okay, you understand. This whole thing is just, and all of a sudden, what fear? They're standing there with faith going, get out of here. There is so much fun, so much fun in the saying, what happened? And they tell you, and then all sorts of things happen. He disappeared in a puff of smoke. I've heard that several times. Just, why a puff of smoke? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes they just fade away. They just go out the distance. Go. Sometimes they just fade right there, just gone. Okay. Sometimes they'll scream and run. That one's fun. I've only had that a couple times. That's fun. I like that. <laughs> okay, sorry. Just a little vindictive nature there on certain things. Okay. When it's gone, that's when you ask the question. <laughs> so, where is it? Oh, it's gone. Okay. Well, turn back to Jesus. Acknowledge his presence. Put your trust and your faith in him. Let his love and his peace flood you. Isn't that cool? Okay, you understand the entity of fear. I, it, it takes all sorts of different forms or whatever. I'm just telling you there's a certain way of doing it. Okay, you get there, get in the presence of Jesus. Make sure you have the presence of Jesus solid. If backing into him is going to work, male or female, doesn't matter. If you need to know his touch, cool. Okay, I had one guy that could feel the hands of Jesus on his shoulders. Oh, I like that. I, I really, okay. And just like, you start yelling at this thing, taking away its authority, taking away its ability to come in and tell it to leave. Boom, that is just so cool. And I love, even when you're all done, you're sitting there, you can be talking about anything, anything else, doesn't matter. And so you say, oh, by the way, where's the fear? And you should see their face because they'll immediately go, ah, it's gone. They'll, they see it immediately. They're looking for it. They can't. They know it's gone. Nothing is finer than that. That makes sense to everybody? The entity of fear? Okay. Just getting rid of the fear is absolutely priceless. Okay. Told you it was going to be a barn burner night, right? You need to get out of here pretty quick. You do. You really do. Okay. <laughs> uh Guys, you got this about fear? It's a big subject matter, isn't it? And it's really strong. Fear of death. What's the deer? What's are you going to submit to the dominion of the enemy? No. Okay. What about the people that are sitting in front of you? They have submitted to the dominion of the enemy. You have to get them free. You gotta get them free. Okay? That makes sense? All there? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you. Oh, what a night, Lord. What a night. You are so good to us. And Lord, I just thank you and praise you that, Lord, even though these are ministers and powerful people of God, Lord, I know that there's enough fear in this room. Choke a couple horses at least. But, Lord, each one is now sitting there going, there's a way of breaking the fear, and it doesn't have to be here. So, Lord, touch each heart, each one of us, Lord, as we leave this teaching tonight, as we go home, Lord, be with us in all of this. And Lord, may we be fearless by morning. Lord, that's my that's my my request is touch us all. Lord, have fun. No fear. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen.